good to, to go. Thank you so much, everybody, um, for taking time out of your day to look at the new features of Mahara 2004. I'm really happy to be sharing the session with you and or sharing these new features with you, um, introducing them to you so that you know what is hopefully coming your way very soon on your own Mahara instances. Um, I see we have a diverse group of uh, Mahara enthusiasts in our room today from novices all the way to um, people who started using Mahara back when there wasn't even version one available, but when the project just started in 2006. So really being there from the start and being there in the trenches. So it's re very good to see all of you here. And I look forward to your feedback and also to your comments throughout the session or then at the end in particular, when we have time for questions as well. What I wanted to do today is um, go through the features that I consider some of the highlights of Mahara. So usually bigger features that um, introduce new functionality or have a huge impact on the usability of Mahara, making it easier for people to use, make things easier to find and so on. Um, and also add really, really good um, things to the platform that do not necessarily only help uh, students, uh, faculty, but also administrators. Before we go into those new features though, I would like to say a big thank you to everybody who's been contributing to this release. And of course, obviously, we have our developers for that. Um, then also front-end developers that implement all the nice things that the uh, graphic designers um, decide of making the, the platform look more attractive and color scheme-wise um, or also just arranging things and uh, then also having created our awesome brand um, but it's not just those it is also our translators that create Mahara in many many different languages and um, our security guards who keep us free of security vulnerabilities everybody who is giving support and a lot of you in the room here today um, are belonging to that category because thanks to your feedback, thanks to your insight in how your students and staff and tutors and lecturers use Mahara, um, do we make progress? Can we get better? And um, do we improve the platform in ways that is suitable to you and that um, really also helps your portfolio work? Then we also have our system administrators and that keep us running on our platform with the entire project infrastructure. Um, BA UX designers are also there that kind of on the opposite end of the technology that look that um, everything of all the new features that we implement in particular, the big new ones um, do make sense that they are usable from the start and that everything looks good. We also have testers. Um, code reviewers that make sure that what developers have created um, gets into the platform um, smoothly and um, fix any bugs before then. And also event organizers. They are a very special uh, group of people um, because they bring people together and uh, they make events happen so that people can exchange ideas and insight of how they use Mahara and therefore help also advance people's knowledge of how Mahara can be used, the possibilities that are there and um, how to leverage them. Especially now in times where lots and lots of things are being put online and curricula are being revised, um, ideas of assessment are being redone. That is where everybody in the community can rally together and come up with ideas of how portfolios in particular can also help in that situation. So big thanks to everybody um, who has contributed to this latest release of Mahara in small and also big ways. And um, without all of them, we would not have the release that we have today. So what do we actually have in today's re in, in the release um, that I'm going to show you today? Well, let's go straight into a Mahara instance.
And I'm going to show to, to start off with a number of features that um, are important for portfolio authors. And then I will go into a, and also show you a number of features that are more important for organizations, especially those that have um, larger groups of people who want to use their portfolio software. So if you live in a country like uh, New Zealand um, or others, where you also have either multiple official uh, national languages or where you just want to make your portfolio site available in multiple languages, um, it was pretty long way to go into the settings, into the preferences, and then change your language around um, so that you first needed to go all the way into the preferences and then uh, switch the language to the one that you desired. That wasn't always quite obvious. And so thankfully to, to a client of ours here in Aotearoa, um, we could implement a language switcher. That makes it very easy directly from the navigation bar to change the language if more than one language is installed on the site. And the entire interface changes automatically into that language um, when there is a language pack available. What we do not yet quite have is the automatic translation of anything that you have entered as text. That would be a very different uh, project, uh, certainly worthwhile one and very interesting one to make those translations automatically. Um, at the moment, we focused on translating the interface. And I think that is in particular really, really nice when you think of language learning portfolios so that students can um, immerse themselves into their target language and use the site that way um, with that language throughout. But when they are in other subjects, they could also easily switch over to, to English or whichever language is the, their primary language. So that's kind of seemingly small feature, but really nice uh, usability improvement. Another improvement um, is the, the way we can share portfolios. So especially when you're on a very large Mahara site that you share with multiple universities or multiple schools, then it can be pretty hard to find uh, somebody in there because everybody will be listed um, from um, in alphabetical order and therefore make it hard to see, well, which Peter Smith is actually from my organization, which one is from a different one, because it's more likely that I want to share my portfolio with him rather than somebody else who is not at my organization. And so Waitemata DHB, one of our district health boards here in New Zealand that is using um, portfolios extensively for nurse registration, um, had the idea of sorting people according to their institution so that when you're on the sharing screen for a portfolio, you, own, you see everybody who's in your own institution first before you see everybody else. And that makes it possible to very quickly narrow that list even more, especially if they are very common names um, and therefore find the right person. We also did a customization for them, which did not go into Mahara for uh, privacy reasons, where you can also display um, additional information about them from their profile, so that that can also then be displayed here in order to give more contextual information about this person. Again, if there are more people, if there are several people with the same name, and um, that can also be added in other Mahara instances as a customization. So we have a number of people in our mid, uh, amidst us who have been using Mahara for a very long time. And therefore, I think they will have probably accumulated quite a number of groups. And especially when you're supporting people on a Mahara instance, you will, have, you will be a member or an administrator of many, many groups. And so that list of groups can get very long. And you can't always delete the group because it's either still needed for teaching um, or it is a group that you just want to keep um, available because portfolios are oftentimes for students' lifelong learning and therefore keeping also group content um, accessible would be nice. 
However, that doesn't quite help with the length number of groups that you're then a member of because you may not be able to leave all of them because they are still active. So that's where group labels come in. Uh, functionality developed uh, or commissioned by PH Burn in Switzerland um, for Switch Portfolio, which is a multi-tenanted Mahara instance for uh, Swiss institutions of higher education. And they had the idea to label groups so that when there is no label, we can see all the groups that I'm a member of. Um, however, if there is a label on a group, the list is automatically reduced to just those groups. And the, the other thing that we've done is, so that you don't always have to set the same filters, um, when you go back to the page, the filter still applies. And you can always add more labels to your group, if you like, um, in order to categorize them even more. Labels can be given on all groups that you're a member of. They can't be given on groups that you're not a member of because then they are not part of your groups. Now, we also use this functionality not just on the groups overview page, but also here in the sidebar where you can quickly see a number of groups. So you can very easily create kind of shortcuts to those groups that you're most interested in. And that selection of groups can be a completely different one of how you filter groups on the group homepage, uh, on the groups overview page. So in here, you now have a display only groups labeled with there we could say 2021 because as somebody living in Aotearoa I like living in the future so we'll just zoom over to 2021 leave the rest of the year behind and as you can see on the right hand side there's now only one group displayed and you don't have to worry about alphabetization or when you join the group it is just according to the label and the third place where we have that is on your profile page because on the profile page, you could not really say which groups you wanted to display or not, but you just could display your groups that everybody else could see. And now you have the possibility to also attach group labels, and therefore really controlling which groups you want to display to other people on your profile page and tell them that you're a member of them. So that would make it much easier, for example, if there is a committee group or an assessment group and where, where assessment needs to be done anonymously, um, that others won't even know that you're in them because they can't see that group on your profile page. Of course, you could always remove the uh, My Groups block entirely, but if you do want to display certain groups, then that is the way to go and have those group labels. Now, speaking of groups, there is a nice feature that we were also able to implement um, that allows us to set default group settings. Because up to now, you always had to go with kind of what we said, uh, the default settings for a group, um, but they might not be the ones that you actually need at your organization. And uh, so similarly of how you can set up a default template for any portfolio page that is created or set up the template for a dashboard or the template for the profile page in the group homepage, now you can set up a template for group settings. And so you can change them all around however you like. Um, if there are some settings that are applicable only when um, staff or administrators create groups, um, the normal default setting will be chosen for um, regular account holders. Now let's just change a few settings around and see what happens. Submit that. And so when I create a new group, then all the changes that I just made are applied. So it's back to yes, 
the rules as standard, recommendations can be made, and everyone except ordinary members can create and edit group content. And then also submissions are archived. So that is a really nice and quick way of um, ensuring that you do not need to write pages on pages of instructions of which settings to change in groups, but could just set the default for people. Um, and then, of course, also change those defaults around. So if you know you want to set up um, a number of groups manually, not via CSV file, but manually, um, then you can give them immediately all these settings. Um, or if you then say, well, after I've created a whole bunch of uh, groups for one study program, I'm creating a whole bunch for another with different settings, then you can change that default setting and create those groups with those default settings. So really very flexible for that. Um, of course, a lot of times you can also achieve that as a site administrator by uploading groups via CSV because there you can already set a lot of those um, settings. Uh, but sometimes it is still necessary to create groups manually or even to create groups via web services. So if you connect your learning management system to Mahara, that way you can also say what the default settings are for those groups created there. Now, kind of going to, to a few more portfolio author features. Um, when, we, when, when you're on a page and you create a page or create a collection, um, you see all these tiles here that have the page title and then our row of icons with um, certain actions. Now, for the longest time, we actually wanted to spruce this up a bit and make it look nice. And now that is possible, um, thanks to funding from the Center for Applied Linguistics um, in the States, uh, that we can now upload a cover image. So it should be a fairly small image because it can only be displayed in, in a small tile. And you can upload the image or choose one if you've already uploaded one it yourself. So to show you what that looks like, when you have all your portfolios with a cover image, you'll see that it is much more vibrant. Um, it will be much easier for people also to recognize their portfolios because they could go according to images. And another nice thing is that you can already add those images to template portfolios. Um, so if you create templates also in the institution or site area or in the groups, then you can add um, cover images directly already there. Now, one thing that you will see here on the screen where I was about to upload an image is another new feature um, because you can now restrict which file types students are allowed to upload. Certain organizations require that um, so that they can really control what sort of um, files make it onto servers um, that belong to the organization. Um, and therefore, it is now possible to restrict them. Um, that list can be much, much longer, of course. Um, this is just for illustrative purposes um, that you can um, have those now listed in order to ensure that students don't upload something that you don't wish to be up on the site. So now we've created portfolios. Um, we've made portfolios look more beautiful when looking at uh, them in your own account. Um, and also looked at sharing portfolios more easily with others. Then sometimes there comes the time that you may want to export your portfolio. And so in the past, we've always recommended people to export their portfolios in HTML and in Leap2A. Um, so my usual spiel was, well, export it as HTML so you can view your portfolio without needing a Mahara instance but at the same time also export that same portfolio in the Leap2A file 
in case you do want to put it back into the same Mahara instance if you mucked something up or um, use it on another Mahara site. So if a student moves schools or universities and their intaking university also uses Mahara, then students would be very, it would be very easy for them to move their portfolio and not have to start from scratch again. Now, of course, always giving that advice kind of begs the question, why don't we have a combined export? That's what I'm going to present to you now. Now you do not have to decide anymore um, how you want to export your portfolio, but it is being exported in all the export formats that have been enabled on your site. A usability improvement because it takes away a decision that um, people have to make, but sometimes can't make easily because both make very good sense. Um, and also kind of space saving because a leap to a export needs to have all the artifacts included and an HTML export needs to have all the artifacts included. So why not combine them? That's what we've been doing. And um, that actually also goes for the um, portfolio submissions. So now you also get a combined export. And if you look very closely here on the screen, you'll see that there's also PDF generation included. That's another new feature in Mahara um, that we've been fortunate to implement, um, which allows us to export portfolios, not just as HTML and as leap to a but also as PDF. The PDF export is a huge new feature. So it has gone into Mahara experimentally. And that means that we do want to make the feature available to you. However, we know that there are, that there are still a few bumps in the road um, until we can confidently say this is um, really fully implemented. We are not going to remove it, um, but we know that there's still a little bit more testing that needs to be done. For example, in regards to performance, what happens when we export a portfolio and that consists of three gigabytes of data. Um, what happens when there are 200 students exporting their portfolio at the same time and they do not have the export queue on and things like that. So um, there's still a little work to go to do and uh, still a little bit more work to do. Um, but we wanted to make it available to you if you want to check it out. Um, and if you also want to help test the feature and improve it and give us your feedback, because it also always comes down to, of course, what sort of content is in the portfolio, because while we can, of course, test with the portfolios we have, um, it is also always good to see um, other people creating their portfolios and then trying to export them. But now what is actually in the export that we've just made? Well, there is the leap to a file, um, which is the file that Mahara is looking for when you want to import your portfolio back into Mahara itself. And then we've got the HTML and the PDF export. And so the HTML export um, also contains the CSS so that the pages do look pretty nice uh, when you view them offline in a browser. And the PDFs then include the portfolios. You can, of course, res still restrict the export to just a collection or a portfolio page or a couple of them. But in this case, I exported the entire content and so every single portfolio is a PDF. That also means that when you have a collection consisting of 50 pages, all these 50 pages are included in one PDF. So every page gets a new page in the PDF um, and therefore is much, much faster than trying to go the way of print to PDF, which we had available in Mahara already for quite a while. So a really, really nice feature I find um, that we've been able to implement and um, are looking forward to hearing your feedback on um, because we do know that oftentimes people do need to submit their portfolio for an accreditation body as PDF and now that is possible. 
However, in contrast to a normal PDF, um, we bring the artifacts along. So the export does uh, include uh, videos or audio files or text documents that form part of your portfolio so that you can look at them when you also view the PDF itself. So it's not a flat portfolio and PDF export like the one we, we get when we print um, to PDF because that'll then only include the links or the, the visual representation of the artifact, but not really the artifact itself, especially if it's a long one. So there's a um, really big enhancement um, that we were able to make for those PDF exports. Now, these were pretty much all the good things for portfolio authors. Um, there are a couple more to come, but they kind of fall a little bit into the, the second part of the new features that we are having on Mahara. Um, and those are in relation to single sign-on. So especially when there's um, big organizations that, have, um, that need to have um, authentication done, single sign-on is being used. And in the past, we always had the normal login field for username, password, and then this tiny link to single sign-on. Um, and that, of course, confused people quite a bit um, because everybody except administrators needed to log in via SSO um, because that was then just the normal login that they have on every other site. But it was the smallest option there. And so we've done customizations on a number of sites to just turn that around and make the SSO button more prominent and that's what we were now able to put directly into Mahara Core so that there's no customization needed. So as soon as you have a uh, single sign-on enabled and activated and working on your site, um, the login box switches so that the SSO via SAML is the, most prom uh, is the most prominent one. And then the normal username and password um, login credentials are hidden under that administration login. Of course, all these language strings can be changed. And um, typically, or especially when you have more than one institution with single sign on, then also the institution name is actually being shown there instead of just SAML login like I have here for my test instance. And uh, that makes it really nice to distinguish the different um, login methods and also then be able to style the buttons if you like in your theme to have different colors and therefore um, even do more nice things to um, show that uh, who needs to log in which way. Now, having logged in and being on a multi-tenanted Mahara instance, um, we sometimes need to move institutions. So in New Zealand, for example, we have myportfolio.school.nz and in Switzerland, uh, switch portfolios operated amongst a number of organizations. And their students do move from one school or from one pedagogical uh, university to another. And uh, therefore, the administrators typically have a lot to do because they need to approve the request for students to move their account, then need to change their authentication method, especially when they are using single sign-on. And so if you have to do that for one student a semester, it is fine. But if you have to do that for 100 or 200 students at the beginning of a year or at the end of an academic year, then that kind of is a quite a lot of work. So Switch Portfolio came up with the idea to be able to move accounts automatically when there is single sign-on involved. And so that's what is now available to everybody on Mahara. So if you are on an instance that has multiple authentication methods um, and at least one of them is single sign-on, then you can use this feature. And so one particular use case would be that um, you have all your current students in an institution on Mahara and all your alumni in a different institution. And in order to also distinguish between alumni and um, regular students, you have them in different trees of your authentication method. 
And so that could be one way to differentiate them, for example. And so what I can now do here is um, I can move my account to the other institution and do a request to move that does not involve an administrator. Because when I send this request off, I need to log in on with my credentials with that um, single sign-on provider to authenticate myself. Then an email is sent back to me that I need to approve and need to click a link and then I can move my account and no admin is needed for that. Pretty sweet, especially when you have a lot of uh, students on your site. Now kind of staying with all these single sign-on improvements, there are a few others that are also not just useful for people um, who are on sites with multiple institutions, but even just on a site if you use Mahara in your own organization without anybody else there. Because single sign-on really makes it nice to um, not have to worry about password resets of uh, students here on Mahara um, or just updating their information manually because all of that can be done automatically. And that has been in Mahara for quite a while already, of course. However, what we were able to um, implement this time around are some additional fields. So what you can now do is um, you can say to which organization somebody belongs. If your single sign on um, catalog contains profile pictures that are stored as so-called base64 images, then they can come along as well. So people can have their standard profile picture brought um, across. And we have a number of role mappings. That means if your single sign on author, um, catalog contains the role administrator, and you say everybody who has the administrator permissions in our catalog um, it can also be a site administrator on Mahara, then they would automatically become a site administrator. If you say, well, we identify all our lecturers in our single sign on as such, then they can automatically receive the institution staff permissions. Therefore, administrators do not have to manually say this person is a staff member, this other person is one and so on. Um, they don't have to wait until a staff member logs in and then requests to have that permission, but it is all done automatically. Again, huge time saver, um, especially in organizations where single sign-on is being used and therefore that automation can be made. Now, there's also this thing called here role mapping for auto group administration. Now, this is a very interesting feature um, because it allows you to define a role in single sign on to give to people who will be added to every single group on your, in your Mahara institution automatically. And they will also automatically be removed again if they lose that role and they log in the next time. And so that means that as support staff member, you do not have to add yourself to any group anymore. You could just be in every group and therefore could have easy access to all the things that are in the groups and give support. Um, that role is also automatically subscribed to every single forum post because oftentimes um, that role then is being used as a monitoring role as well um, so that um, any alerts would always go out to that group and therefore they could, for example, monitor any copyright things that need to be checked um, or what is going on in the group itself. So that is all on an institution basis. But because Mahara is also multi-tenanted and therefore works with many institutions using Mahara, you could even say that this role here from this particular institution administers every single group on the site. This is in particular good for um, large Mahara sites, either where one organization creates different um, institutions, say for a different faculty, uh, but therefore is still one organization, or where there is a governing body who needs to, um, who needs to monitor um, certain interactions on the site. 
The other nice thing is that, and we are almost done with all the single sign on here, lots and lots of new features though that we could put in, is uh, that you can also define one institution that holds the basic information of all the single sign on um, authorities. And then that is used to create the other institutions. So now we can create institutions based on single sign-on information automatically. So if we have a site for all of the, all the schools, say in New Zealand, and every school were on the same single sign-on authority, and within that distinguished by their schools, then if a teacher logs onto our Mahara site, their institution, does, their school doesn't exist yet, the school gets created automatically, they are being put in and can automatically also receive staff permissions. If a school from a different, if a teacher from a different school comes along, they log in, their uh, school doesn't exist yet, it will also be created automatically. So again, lots of improvements for administrators to help them get away from some of those very mundane tasks that are part of an admin life and be able to focus on supporting um, staff and students more um, when there are questions around functionality of the Mahara site, for example. So those were quite, quite a lot of new features, but we are not stopping there. There's lots more in Mahara itself. And um, one of the, the bigger changes that you will see is that we are calling pe um, users now people um, because we wanted to humanize the language on the site, um, especially in English, where user has a pretty negative connotation a lot of times when you're not looking at IT. And therefore, we wanted to ensure that um, people feel comfortable using the site and aren't always reminded um, of the, all the negative that can be associated with users. In other languages, that might not be a problem. So we do not force people to make changes there when we did the translation update. Um, but what you can see in Mahara now more is that we call users people or just call them group members. Sometimes we need a bit, little bit more of a dry um, admin technical term. So that's when the account holder comes in. Um, and other times we have portfolio authors or institution members. There's only a few places still left in Mahara where we are using user, um, and that is typically with third-party integrations um, so that it is very clear what the other end requires um, rather than uh, forcing our language on them. And um, we also haven't quite gotten rid of the um, common user name yet. Um, but since it's one word, we kind of thought for the time being, we'll leave it until we find one that is more, um, more um, that is a nicer term rather than using the username there. So that is a big change um, in terms of just language and also reminding ourselves to, um, to make, yeah, to, use those new terms rather than just the, the easy user in order to make people feel welcome on the site and um, also show that people are behind the software, that the software is for people and not just for very abstract um, entities that can't really be described. There's lots of other new features in Mahara, some of them are fairly small, yet still have a big impact. Um, when, for example, for uh, sign off and verification, the details are now being shown so that you know when uh, somebody signed off their portfolio and who verified the portfolio, um, or that peer assessors um, can do get an alert when they cannot add content any or cannot add their assessment anymore because. Um, the portfolio author has already signed off on the portfolio. And so some of those smaller features are in there and then also a few technical improvements um, that go beyond what I had shown you with single sign on and therefore kind of left it out, out of those highlights. As usual, you can find all those changes and all the new features in the Mahara manual. 
um, indicated by our little bot that says uh, uh, 2004 so that you can find things easily and uh, can therefore read up on those features. And on the what's new in Mahada 2004 page, um, there is also the feature video, which is a condensed version here of the webinar that we are having today. As always, you can download and install Mahara on your own servers. You uh, can do that immediately now or right after the session. Or if you have a support company, do get in touch with them and ask them when um, an upgrade could be made for you um, so that you can have take advantage of all of these new features. Because now with the release of Mahara 2004, Mahara 18.10 is falling out of support. So we are not giving security updates anymore for that because security updates are only made for or are made for a year and a half for each version of Mahara. Um, and then we are going on to um, other versions. But of course, we do also uh, recognize that not everybody can move as quickly um, as we move with the new versions. And uh, therefore, we have now a premium service available for the community, um, which is the extended security support. That means that when a version of Mahara uh, falls out of support, um, the, the extended security support can kick in. Um, and then provide the organization that purchases that um, premium service another two years of security support for their version of Mahara. They can also already purchase that extended security support, of course, while they are on um, a supported version of Mahara, because that then gives them early announcement of um, upcoming um, security vulnerabilities that are being that are fixed. And so now for Mahara 1810, which has already been supported for a year and a half, the support, official support um, for the community finished in April, but um, it can be extended until April 2022, um, putting it to a whopping three and a half years of support. And then, of course, with all the other versions, similarly, 1904 is going out of support in October. And then with the extended security support, an organization can extend its life by another two years. I, of course, kind of always like working with the new features of Mahara, but sometimes it is simply necessary um, to stay on, on a version for a longer time. And now you can do that securely. If you have any questions, um, we will have a few minutes uh, for that today, of course, in our session. But if you'd like to get in touch afterwards, um, you're very welcome to contact me online or um, on the usual social media channels or send me an email. Before we go into uh, questions, I would like to make a couple of announcements, which I will also send you the links um, in an email because we have a number of um, or a couple of events coming up that I already know of. And the first one that has its deadline is the ePortfolio Forum um, organized by ePortfolios Australia. Um, that is not going to be until the end of October. However, the call for papers is due in the third week of June. And most likely this event is going to be held online this year, of course, um, but if not, then it'll take place at Deakin University in um, Melbourne. But yes, um, call for papers is still open. You're welcome to submit a paper, even if you're not living in Australia um, and be part of that community, which is a very fantastic one. Um, because a very welcoming and long-standing portfolio um, interest. The other event um, is going to be organized by my colleagues um, in, from Catalyst IT Europe up in the UK. Is um, the Mahara UK and Ireland virtual Mahara Hui, um, which has been put onto the 15th of July, because the week before, um, another announcement, is the global Moodle Moot. 
And so we did not want to compete with them because a lot of people in the Mahara community, of course, are also um, long-standing Moodle community members. And therefore, we wanted to make sure that the uh, um, events don't clash. So you're very welcome to register for that event. And also let my colleagues know if you're interested in speaking there, because as far as I know, there are still speaking slots available um, to share your experiences with Mahara, with portfolios in general, and um, what you're doing um, at your organization. And now that gives us time to look at any of your questions and please do feel free to grab the microphone um, and ask your question. Thanks, Christina. That was excellent. Thanks, Jasmine. Well, which feature did you like best? So I think it's uh, the simple things like the images on the portfolios and the collections, you know, mm -hmm. I like that. And um, the labels in the groups is fantastic. Yeah, thank you. We're looking, um, when we do our upgrades, so we've got quite a few versions to go up. We're looking to build a new Moodle site and the new Mahara site. So we've got lots and lots of mini sites in our Moodle site that we use Mahara pages for, you know, for all mm -hmm. our service departments that work really well. And just what's the best way to I don't know if anybody's got any experience of building a new Mahara site when they've got a lot of students and a lot of portfolios and a lot of collections and a Mahara site that they want to migrate over. I'm just, my IT manager has told me I need to do my housekeeping, I need to tidy my room before I get my new site. So I don't yeah. know, I'm, I'm probably looking for anybody that's had experience of doing that that can of me any advice um there are lots of possibility or at least a couple of possibilities of doing that um to yeah. usually i i recommend to do a database upgrade um and include mm -hmm. the old portfolios but then if you do not want to carry everybody across to your new site um that yeah. you before you migrate or upgrade that you um remove them from the site uh, so that mm -hmm. you have an archived site with everything and then uh, yeah. you have a second server, which is a copy of that old yeah. one. But from that one, you remove everybody who has been, who hasn't logged in in six, seven or eight years. Yeah, and then fine. only yeah. only upgrade the, the remaining people. That is typically yeah, the so safest. Yeah. Uh, and then just take across what I need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, unfortunately I lost, well, we, we Oh, that's charming. Yeah. Can everybody hear me at lags? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, so we've not had a, an upgrade for a good number of years now, so I'm really looking forward to a new shiny Mahara and a yeah. theme as well. And we start looking at themes to full rebrand. Yep, uh, that sounds like an exciting project, Jasmine. All the best with that. And yeah, let us know if you have any yeah. questions. Um, yeah. Which, which features do, does everybody else like? Yes, Alexander. Yeah, uh, I would like to know because we are new to this and mm -hmm. we are using presently Moodle mm -hmm. uh, for the students. Uh, we have College of Dentistry. So we use Moodle and uh, when I looked at the Moodle features, I'm not finding any option of which will support a e-portfolio. Right. So that's how somebody recommended Mahara. So I want to know because we I want to now initiate for only my subject and then uh, tell in our university how useful it is. So mm -hmm. how, how can I go uh, about? Um, there I'm actually kind of look, looking at Lisa. Um, Lisa, do you happen to have your uh, the link to your ebook handy? Um, e-portfolio based assessment because I think I probably need a couple minutes longer than you do to find that link. Yep. I will. So, thank you. So, um, Lisa, do you want to say a few words um, for what you had done with that guide? Sure. Uh, let me turn my camera on. Though it is early, and the morning, so no guarantees what I look like. Um, 
yeah, well, the, the, the e-book um, will simply gather together examples of use, uh, mainly across Ireland, but also the UK. Um, different disciplines, different use of Mahara for formative assessment, for summative assessment, for reflection, for extracurricular activities. Uh, it's a multimedia book, so some are text-based, some are video-based, and I've just popped the link in. Actually, I popped my link in there. Let me just make sure that I've popped the correct link in there, because that is my edit version. So you okay. might just sign in. But that was the idea behind it, so that I could share with others some examples um, to help inspire, I guess, um, inspired me to do Mahara when people were kind of struggling to see how it might actually be used. Uh, now that should be related. Probably the same one, but there you go, it's in choice now anyway. Yeah. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. And uh, let me just see. Uh, yep, that's that's the same that I have as well. And the other publication actually that uh, Lisa has been involved in that is also really fantastic is the Learning Portfolio in Higher Education. Got the link right there. Um, <laughs> which um, gives a really nice uh, literature overview and also ideas of how to implement portfolios that way. And uh, more as learning portfolios rather than assessment portfolios. And a third literature tip, since we are speaking about um, free um, online resources, is the Field Guide to ePortfolio that has been published by ABLE um, a few years ago, um, kind of three. Yeah, um, officially published two years ago, but collected um, over the two years prior. And that gives kind of an executive summary of all the things that um, institutions should be considering when going to use portfolios. Lisa, which features or uh, feature did you like best? Because I know last in, la in the last version, we had your fantastic magic blocks in there. Um, so that yeah. was already really, really huge and, and a nice improvement. So which ones do you like now in this one? Well, I'm excited, to be honest, because we're, we're jumping to, we're going from 1904 to 2004. Now we had the 1910 magic block mm -hmm. anyway. Um, sorry, placeholder block. Uh, but I'm excited about, it's actually a 19, uh, 1910 feature. It's really going to revolutionize how students lay out their page, that more flexible mm -hmm. layout, the drag and drop design of the page is going to change my people's, my mm -hmm. users' lives. Um, because most of the queries that I get in as, a, as support is around changing of layout. So that right. will be huge for me. Yeah, fantastic. Um, I like, I, I like the, the, the smaller feature, the, the, mm -hmm. the little cover images on um, the pages and collection tiles. I think that will actually, again, it's all about the usability and making it um, friendly to, for the students and mm -hmm. small things that are going to make a difference to my students. Yeah, fantastic. So can I use it for my students for one semester uh, to test how it can be used here? Um, we do not have an instance at the moment um, that you can you can use. Typically, Mahara is installed by organizations. Um, there are a few um, providers out there that do offer Mahara for individuals um, on a um, either free or um, paid by service that sometimes also comes with advertisements. So that could be a possibility for you um, to trial it with a small group of, um, of students, for example, before setting up your own Mahara site. Okay, so if I need to start about uh, from where I can get some support um, you can sign up on the com in, in the community, Alexander, and um, their free support is provided in the forums in particular, um, or you can hire a support company that assists you with consulting services. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, madam. And Lisa, yes, uh, thank you for posting that link uh, to Helen Chen's book there. That is also a really, really good one. Yeah. Look very straightforward. It's an yeah. easy read. 
Yeah. Yes. Helen, Helen Chen from Stanford University is uh, one of the um, icons, iconic, uh, yeah, icons in the e-portfolio world uh, or portfolio world in general. And she is also on the board for ABLE. Um, which this year unfortunately had to postpone its conference, but it'll take place next year again. And uh, this year actually ABLE is looking very much into digital ethics. Um, there's a task force that uh, deals with the topic and we are in the finalizing stages of kind of getting the, the initial document and the initial 10 principles for digital ethics um, reviewed so that uh, we hope to be able to publish them later in the year and give people um, in, yeah, just some guidance on hand um, for some of the digital ethics topics that are important to deal with um, when looking into portfolios. Now, the, um, we are now past, uh, shortly one minute past the hour. Um, if you have any other questions, please do feel free to stick around um, and I'm happy to answer them. For everybody else who wants to leave or needs to leave now to the next meeting, thank you so much for your time this morning. And I look forward to your comments and uh, feedback on the new features and also all the features, if you like, and um, learn how you're using Mahara with your students, faculty, or anybody else um, that you're supporting. I wish you all the best, and of course, also in particular, um, best of health uh, to get through the pandemic. And um, yeah, hopefully life will get back to, to better times for everybody very soon. Thanks, Christina. Thanks, Thank everybody. Bye. Bye. Bye.